I will seek to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to meditate in his temple and inquire of his beauty. Father, I bring before you this house, this family, and this community, those that you've drawn from all over the nation and all over the world to sit in this house. You've given the grace of your servant David to sit here and to gaze at you and to meditate on your word, to inquire of you and ask you questions. Or 20 years later, I look at this family and I ask you again for a fresh release of the spirit and the grace that you gave David. One thing I have asked of the Lord, the all-consuming passion of his heart, the thing he wanted above all others, the thing he sought for with all of his strength, the thing that kept him up at night was to dwell in your house, to find your presence, to build you a home, and to never leave that place. Psalm 15, who may abide in the tent of the Lord, who may dwell in his holy mountain. Oh, you consumed that man with more than just a coming and a going. You consumed him with an abiding, with a dwelling, with a living in the house of the Lord and the courts of his God for all the days of his life. Father, I ask that you would do to us what you did to David. You gave that man a one thing cry. Lord, do to us what you did to Paul the apostle. Oh, this one thing I do, I forget what lies behind. And I press on towards the upward call of God in Christ. Paul was a man ruined with one thing. He wasn't a man distracted by many things. He was a man provoked by one thing. Oh, would you do that to us? Father, do to us what you did to Mary of Bethany. In an age of distraction and thousand things fighting for our affection. Oh, give the grace for the one necessary thing to sit amidst all the noise and distractions and things vying for our attention, our loyalty and our devotion. To actually sit in the middle of it all and hear the voice of our shepherd. Oh God, give that grace tonight. Give that fresh grace tonight to this community. Father, we are in need of a one thing desire. We are in need again of that one burning passion lest we be thrown off by anything that comes and wants our attention. Oh, Father, in a generation that is provoked by many things, I ask that you would set one thing before us, that you would consume us with the beauty of the Lord. Oh, God, we don't know how to seek that which we have not seen. Father, ruin us with a vision for your Son. Ruin us for anything less than the fullness of the indwelling Holy Spirit the fullness of Ephesians 3.19, filled with the fullness of God. Oh, Lord, ruin our generation. Ruin me. Ruin my generation. Father, this generation is talked about as though we don't know what our future holds. We're thrown around by the wind. We don't know how to work hard. And Lord, I set before you a remnant, ones that you've plucked from the fire, even sitting in this room right now that you've called from all over the nation and all over the world to buy into a different narrative than the one that we've been taught from our birth. You are for us. You are for us. Though the world says otherwise, you have plucked for yourself an entire generation from a fire and you've clothed us in clean garments and put a turban on our head and we are clean before you. Oh, when a generation that gives themselves to anything that will entertain. I set before you a different generation, O oh Lord. Those sitting in this room tonight, me, that seek your face day after day, going, I'll settle for nothing less than the fullness. I will settle for nothing less than your fullness in me and through me and in this room and through this community. Oh, you said it and I believe it. And I hold you to your word. You said that if we seek you, we would find you. You said that if we knock, the door be opened. You said that if we ask, we would receive. You are not a man that you would lie or a son of man that you would change your mind. 
and we hold you to your word. Oh God of Israel, we hold you to your word. We ask tonight, we seek and we knock for doors of revelation to be opened, for the eyes of our heart to behold, for desires to emerge within us, for one consuming passion to break forth amidst all the distractions, to lay hold of our God. We love you, Jesus. You're the reason this room exists. You're the reason we exist for your pleasure and for your goodness. So Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that you would set in this community again that burning passion of Psalm 27.4 to live before your presence all the days of our life. Jesus draws closer. One thing have I desired of you, Lord, and that will I see. Take us back, take us back to our first love. generation like Jacob, hearts like David. Oh, help us come nearer to you. We don't want to be a people distracted by many things. Take away all distractions, Lord. But a people given to one thing. It's one thing that we want. Oh, remove all things that hinder love. Give us a singular fault. Lord, our hearts are so dull. Take us back. Passive compared to yours. We want life on the inside again. We want the gift of hunger. Give us that precious gift of hunger. Hunger is a sign of our vitality. Oh, we lack hunger, Lord. Would you give it to us? Give us the gift of hunger. Blessed are those Strike who our hearts again. Oh, invite us into the blessedness of hunger again. We want to hunger for more. Lay hold of us with this one thing. The presence of our God. Consume us, Holy Spirit. Jacob, give us hearts like David. One thing we want, one thing we need, it's you. Jesus, make us a generation like Jacob. Give us hearts like David. One thing we want, one thing we need, it's you. Yeah. 